Welcome to my channel. I'm Scott and in this video I am going to walk you through the process of valuing Freight Car America's stock by analyzing their financial statements and dissecting their financial ratios so we can determine if it's a buy or sell. Freight Car America is a manufacturer of freight cars for the railway industry. The company is headquartered in Chicago and was founded in 1901. It went public in 2005 and trades on the Nasdaq and Deutsche Börse. All of its manufacturing takes place in Mexico. In 2020, it delivered 751 rail cars, compared to nearly 2,300 in 2019. It builds, repairs, and leases freight cars mainly for the transportation of bulk materials like coal, metals, wood products, and autos. In addition to the freight cars it constructs, the company also manufactures parts for cars. In September of last year, the company announced its plan to close its facility in Alabama. Also, layoffs would occur over the following months. The CEO of the company said the depressed rail market and the devastating impact and ongoing threat of COVID-19 are reasons for the layoffs and the plant closure. Let's get started with the model. This is a microcap company, 100 million market cap. They're trading at 641 a share and they have 16 million shares outstanding. Let's look at the financials. The way you value a company is you estimate the free cash flows into the future and then you discount those numbers back to today's value. That's what we're doing in this video. And free cash flow is cash flow from operations minus capital expenditures. So you can see they had positive free cash flow in 2017, negative in the following years. Net income is the profit and loss on the income statement. It's revenue minus expenses and that's negative every year. Revenue is a sales for the company and that decreases every year. It looks pretty bad from 400 million down to 100 million. This is the company's income statement. The top line is the revenue, the sales. Below that is the cost of revenue. These are the expenses directly related to generating the revenue. And the difference between those two numbers is the gross profit. And they have negative gross profit every year except in 2017. Below that is operating expenses. Then below that is operating income which is negative every year. Below that is the interest they pay on their debt, and they paid $2.2 million in 2020, much more than the prior years. Below that is other income and expenses, which are usually impairments or write-offs. The bottom line of the income statement is their net income, which is negative and getting worse each year. This is the company's statement of cash flows. The top line is operating cash flow. That's how much cash the company generates or loses from its operational business. You could think of operating cash flow as net income converted to cash because net income is your accounting profit and loss. It's not actual cash. Then you have capital expenditures, which are investments in property, plant, and equipment. Operating cash flow minus CapEx gives you your free cash flow. They did have positive free cash flow in 2017, negative in the three years after that. Since they have negative free cash flow, they've been issuing debt to run their business. They issued 10 million in 2019 and 57 million in 2020. Let's look at the capital structure. $30 million of equity, 85 million of debt. Their 26% equity, 74% debt. Their net debt is 31 million and their WAC is 12.5%. And that's a discount rate we're going to apply to the future cash flows. We estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimated a terminal value, which is all cash flows past year four. We discounted those numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company of negative $29 million. We divide that by 16 million shares and we get a stock price of zero because you can have a negative stock price. I could not find a scenario that would make this company profitable in the future. Things look pretty grim for this company. One analyst priced this stock at $4 a share. Two more analysts priced this stock and their average stock price was $5.25. In the past five years, this stock has really struggled. It hit pretty close to $20 a share, but has come down ever since. It has come up a little bit in the past few months. This is the stock price the last year, and it was really low at one point. If you bought it down here, you could have made a really good return. These are the total freight cars in North America since 2009. So you can see the number is pretty steady. It is growing a little bit, but this company's revenue is going down. That's not a good sign. They don't have much of this market and their market share keeps decreasing. 
They have a really high beta, 2.49, so the stock moves two and a half times the market. It's very volatile. The stock has gone up nearly 600% in the past 52 weeks, while the S&P 500 went up 47%. The 52-week low was 90 cents, the high was 863. And the stock is trading above its 50-day and 200-day moving average. About 2 to 3 million shares are traded each day on this stock. Of the 16 million shares outstanding, 12 million are on float, 27% are held by institutions, and over 9% of the shares on float are shorted. In the past year, this stock has done really well relative to its industry and the market. But in the past three years and five years, this stock has really struggled. It's down a lot, while its industry and the market are up a lot. Analysts are forecasting their earnings to grow 103%, whilst the industry grows 15% and the market grows 15%. Analysts are forecasting their revenue to grow 35%, its industry 7%, and the market 9%. In the past five years, their annual earnings decreased 64%, whilst the industry increased 8%, and the market increased 12%. In the past year, their earnings decreased 12%, its industry decreased 7% and the market increased 18%. If you invested $10,000 into this company 10 years ago, you'd be at $2,600 today. That's a 74% total loss. The biggest shareholder is the factory that manufactures their products. They own 12.5% of the stock. Van Vanguard at 3%, Minerva Advisors, Hamblin Watsa, and Renaissance Technologies. Let's look at their financial ratios. The average P.E. in the market is 33, the median is 22. P.E. is stock price over earnings per share. To calculate earnings per share, that's net income over shares outstanding. They have negative net income, so we can't look at the P.E. Price to sales is 0.9, so investors are paying 90 cents for $1 revenue. That's a really good price to sales ratio. Price to book is 3.3, which is pretty close to the market median. They have negative EBIT, so they have negative return on invested capital, negative interest coverage ratio, and negative ROE. They do have a good current ratio at 1.7. Their current assets are $54 million of cash, $14 million of receivables, and $39 million of inventory. They do seem to be undercapitalized. They had negative $69 million of free cash flow, positive $15 million of working capital, so they're short $19 million. So they're going to need more debt or equity financing to run their business over the next 12 months. The best way to look at ratios is to compare them to companies in the same industry. I've done videos of three other companies in the same industry as Rail. And if Rail has a number in blue, they're better than the average. If they have a number in red, they're worse than the average. We can't look at their PE. Their price to sales and price to book and current ratio are better than average. They have a terrible ROE. They're the highest in debt of the four companies and they're by far the smallest of the four companies, and they don't pay a dividend. The two Canadian companies do pay a dividend. So to summarize, I value the company at nothing because they've been really struggling over the years. Their revenue is going down a lot, and unless they turn things around, I don't see how much longer this company can stay in business. I rank their free cash flow as one out of 10, their revenue one out of 10, and their ratio is five out of 10. So let me know what you think. Give this video a like, subscribe, or comment below. Also, if you'd like to get a custom valuation or just support the channel, you can become a member by clicking on the link in the description below.